G'day. We're down at the beach. Normally there's a lot of people down here and there's a lot of sun bakers, but today we've got a bit of a storm coming in. So unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, we haven't got uh, a lot of sun bakers. And sometimes when you walk down the beach, you, you, you have to watch where you look because all the girls are out and they're only in very slim bikinis. And it's very hard to uh, keep a pure mind. But anyhow, today I'm reading out of uh, the second book of Samuel, which is a historical document, a continuation from the first book of Samuel. It was written about 930 BC by an unknown author. And we pick up the story of David and his reign as the king for the next 40 years. It's after King Saul and Jonathan have died. And the book is full of intrigue. It's full of mystery, cunning, betrayal, deceit, murder, lust, adultery, revenge, hatred, war, rape and retaliation. It's also got victories and failures. And I'm amazed that it has not been made into a Days of Our Lives series for afternoon television. But I strongly recommend you read it all for yourself if you want to get the full benefit from this particular book of the Bible. The first half, David goes mighty things for the Lord because the Lord is with him and he's in communication with the Lord. For example, from 2 Samuel 5, verse 17, David defeats the Philistines. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it and went down to the stronghold. Now the Philistines had come and spread out in the valley of Rephraim, so David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? And the Lord answered him, Go, for I will surely hand the Philistines over to you. So David went to Baal Perazim, and there he defeated them. He said, As the waters break out, the Lord has broken out against my enemies before me. So they called that place Baal Perazim. That's the Lord of the breakthrough. Okay, now in the second half, we see David suffering the consequences of sin. In 2 Samuel 11, 1 to 5. David paid dearly for his temptation to the flesh, including the loss of the child conceived in adultery. But through it all, we see the grace and the mercy of God on the man called David, whose heart was right towards God most of the time. But we learn from 1 Peter 5, 8 that the devil prowls around us like a roaring lion, seeing whom he may devour. And he was not a young man when he gazed at the naked woman from his balcony, but he gazed too long. Here we are, let's read from 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1. In the spring at that time, when the kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king, king's men and sent the whole army of Israelites. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbath. But David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed, walked around on the roof of the palace, and from the roof he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful, and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, isn't that Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messages to get her. She came to him, he slept with her, she had purified herself from her uncleanness. Then she went back home, and the woman conceived and sent word to David saying, I am pregnant. Those fateful words. But you know, it says in the Bible later in 1 John 2, 16, that the lust of the eyes is not of the Father, it is of the world. And in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says, cast down every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. David is like most men, even today. We see naked women as eye candy. Something to be desired, and when you gaze too long, they will burn passion in your heart and you will be drawn into sin. This story is in the scriptures, as I'm sure, as a beacon to all men on the sea of life. There are three things that usually bring a man of God down. The three G's, they say, 
gold, glory and girls. You only need to read Psalm 51 to know how repentant and how sorry David was. He says, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. He begs the Lord, please forgive me. And Paul urges the people in Galatians 5.16. He says, Live by the Spirit and you will not satisfy the desires of the flesh. If you get a glimpse of eye candy, do not gaze at it, fellas. Cast it down and turn away to retain your close walk with the Spirit of God. We thank you, Lord, for your word. It's a wonderful God. It's a lamp unto our feet. Father, help keep us close to you. Help keep us casting down those thoughts and imaginations that exalt themselves against the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. And you guys out there, you have a great day. If you're interested in the next book with uh, these readings from the scriptures, just click on the little button above and that'll take you to the next book that we're going to do on another day. Have a great day.